Hi, welcome to Ginger's Place. Um, today we're going to talk about crazy quilts and this is some tips. Uh, if you're new to crazy quilting, I'm going to briefly go over some things I've encountered. You can do what you want, but I'm going to tell you what I've done. So I have a quilt that I'm making. It's 42 blocks. And these are all individual blocks. And I have... Um, a six block here that I am showing. Um, tip number one, I recommend you keep them individual and work on embroidery only because you can put a hoop on it with ease. Um, when you start embellishing and doing the embroidery after the fact on some squares, you you bump into these. So I had this whole thing sewn together and I started my embroidery and then I would start embellishing, getting carried away and it just was getting in my face. So I undid everything except for this block and I'll explain that. So tip number one, work individual, do your embroidery uh, first and fill your seam lines, that's it. And then just move on to your next block. When you're done, you can sew them together and however you know you want and then you add your embellishments your buttons and your beads and your ribbon and um, because it just gets too complicated so here's how why I tore this all apart you see this little rose that I have that covers two blocks right here this piece right here it covers two blocks because this was all together and I like that look. This to me is very linear. Um, it really defines a square. And I don't necessarily like that in this quilt. And so I'm stuck with this for now because I'm not tearing it apart. But for example, um, these two squares are not together yet. And um, oh, I don't have a doily. I thought I have a doily. Oh, here we go. Here we go. So I can do this by placing a doily between the two after the fact. Even though I'm covering up my embroidery stitch stitches, that's fine. But I can place it anywhere I want and I can kind of get rid of these linear lines because I'm just finding that I don't particularly like it. Yes, I could remove this and I might. This I'm not and this I'm not, and this I'm not over here. But um, anyway, just tip number one is work your embroidery on individual squares. And tip number two is to not go all the way to the edge because you will have to fold this to sew it together and at least a quarter inch. So don't waste your resources on the edges. Um, and again, it'll be easier to use your hoop for the embroidery if you don't have it embellished. Otherwise, you're bumping knots and all kinds of things. Um, so I'm going to show you this block once I'm done. I have three more blocks to finish. And um, we'll go over maybe this in a few minutes. Uh, you should know how to do a crazy quilt. If you don't, I'll just be very basic. Uh, get a backing. Um, place the center block of your style and size and focus in a circular pattern around. And um, that's how you make your blocks. Um, tip number three is sometimes they don't put a backing on these. I am. I'm going to stitch in the ditch where I can. The backing will not be pretty like a normal quilt, but that's not the focus. The focus is the front, so I'm going to do what I can. Um, invest in, in these for your embroidery. These are good. You mark them and uh, just start sewing away. These are sold at Amazon or many other places. Um, inspiration. If you don't have it in front of you, well, I don't have it in front of me. I don't get inspired. 
So I placed all you know all my buttons in this plate. It's easy for me to look at. Um, inspiration two is books. <laughs> so I I have um, this really nice book that has. Uh, in fact, I believe in the front. She talks about the uh, these. Yeah, you can copy this. This is the book, Kathy something, C, I, I'm sorry. You can copy these and put them on plastic, or you can just buy them from Amazon, and they really were cheap. But um, this is this is how you do these. So, But it's inspirational, it's, it's helpful, it talks about ribbons and embroidery. And um, so, the only thing I will say is, if you put all these buttons... Yeah, and you, you don't want to place a doily on it. So some of these you should leave kind of blank. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a tricky situation, but you're just going to have to embellish in the middle or somewhere else, not, not on your borders. So the doily, um, like I want to use, and the lace and all that, sometimes these will get covered up. So you might have to remove a couple buttons or something like that just to to put over. But I think you're better off just embroidering and then moving on. So um, yeah, so this is one book. Um, another book I have is by Alice Alder's Crazy Quilting. And this is mainly for inspiration. And... There is some how-tos, but, I mean, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? So, a lot of inspiration. She talks about some stuff, layering the, the quilt itself, and I believe she has some projects in here that you can do. Um, so, pin cushions and that kind of thing. But it's very uh, inspirational for me. I like to look at what she's done. And um, I've copied a couple things on that. And then, of course, the queen, I think, of Crazy Quilt, Judith Montano. And um, hers is mainly inspirational. She talks about, you know, a little bit of tutorial, but not really. It's just all the different things. So it's inspirational. Just beautiful work. She does beautiful work. Um, all right. Um, I make my own doilies. So... Uh, the one that I showed you earlier I bought, but I'm starting one now, and that came, uh, I think it's this one, but it's page one, the first one, this green one here, and I'm just going to make it to here, to where these scallops end, and then end it off and use that, so you can do that, and then uh, you can crochet trim, um, I have different books on trim but this is one I grabbed but there's all different kinds you can crochet if you do so you got your buttons your um, your um, crochet of course you can use Rick Rack um, and then beads I have rhinestones and uh, I have a lot of beads these are just tiny smidgen of what I have. FYI, I got this at uh, Dollar Tree for a dollar, the jar. And every day I seem to go in my bead room where I have over 10,000 beads. <laughs> and um, I just start bringing them out. So my shoe box here is getting quite full. But beads are great, especially seed beads. And uh, I have used the rhinestones. And then we have some embroidery threads. These are a little thicker than your normal DNC. Um, I have a few. And they're just thicker. So the other thing is you will need lots and lots of DMC or whatever you use. Is it J&P uh, floss? So... Um, this is a good way to store them. You know those little cards and you stick them in plastic and 
I, I just I'm a visual person so I have to see what I have and so I, I cut these out on my spell binders labeled the color hole punched them and I just if I want one I I take this little hook off like that take the one I want and then uh, just set this one aside you know or put it back on until I I'm done with the other color but I keep I keep the whole thing so I don't lose track so you need lots of this and this is one way to to show what you have and it's very thick <laughs> so lots of thread and of course the little metal bar that I'm using I I, I picked up at my work it was scrap metal um, but you can find bars in a lot of different places or you can use PVC or something I also have all my ribbons which I'm not going to show you but they're hanging on my wall with um, the bar. So I went and bought a bunch of, well, some of these I've had. These are napkins, but they do, you can't see it in this camera probably, but they do have a, a print, but I probably won't use these in my crazy quilt. But I might use these because of the embroidery work, but I display them on real thick cardstock, which I, um, the blank but I'll just cut those cut them out and use them but this helps me be uh, watch for pins so if you pin them but um, yeah this helps me be creative to see what I have so I've displayed all my the ones that I have I don't have a ton um, so I had some vintage ones. This piece is 10 inches long, so it probably won't go on my quilt. This is Table Runner, and she's too big. This is a doily I made, but I'll cut this. I hadn't finished it. Uh, you could see the string hanging here, so I'll cut this and um, use that somewhere. And then I display doilies that I have. I have more, but these are ones I would use on a quilt, the smaller ones. So I put that on the poster cards, and I can really see those. Um, I'm going to do a tutorial on uh, dyeing my silk shibori. I got this top uh, at Goodwill. Um, I cut it up and um, I'm going to dye this. I'll make a video on that. I even wrote how to do it. Um, I got the inspiration from Turtle Soup Beads on YouTube and that woman is fantastic with um, Sabori silk on her jewelry. Uh, another way for inspiration. Um, it's one of the things I got too. Another inspiration is I buy, I have, I've had a lot of lace, little trims, and I wrap them around the card. Um, <clears throat> and I'll just set them on the square and you know see what see what I want this tells me what I have how much I have I do the same with my velvet trim uh, I'm a visual person so I have to see what I have and this is a good way to display what you have I don't know what others do but <clears throat> for me I have to have a visual and um, it works I get inspired by it so uh, <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, you definitely need uh, needles. And I, again, Dollar Tree jars. So I labeled quilting. I have embroidery needles. I have some tapestry needles. And you're going to find that you're getting a junk drawer. Uh, if you can use them, I just throw them in a bowl and I'll use them later. Um, when I stop using those, because they're too small, I'm just throwing the scraps in a baggie and then I will make fabric out of the scraps. I You just sew the whole thing and, and make a fabric sheet, so I'll use that for something someday. Uh, another tip is to definitely get yourself a color wheel. It helps with um, uh, 
figuring out what colors you need. So it does help complimentary and all that. So that is an essential for me. Um, so this is real quick tutorial. Oh, Rick Rack is another one. Um, ribbon. Oh, um, well, let's go over a couple of these. It'll help me. So ribbon. Uh, I made the mistake of buying some ribbon. I think it's quarter inch silk ribbon. It's too wide. I really need thin ribbon. So I'm going to purchase some more ribbon. I, I need to purchase some dye and some ribbon because um, I don't I don't have enough that that I need. So buttons with beads, little trinkets you can add. Um, uh, this, um, what do they call that? A yo-yo. Then I, I did a bead, uh, little thing in it. Uh, here's some rhinestones that I used the base of my little bird cage. Thinking about putting some here, but this is a very busy block. <laughs> so this is all hand beaded. And um, I'll show you this right here. This is the fabric, and I, I this one right here, and I, with the white, I did the crystal beads. So it changes the whole look of the fabric. And then on this purple velvet, which is here, ironically, I uh, got this from a little girl's dress that I tore up um, from a garage sale. But I just used some metallic thread and made a grid, and then I put beads on it. It's not straight, but that's okay. I don't mind it. Um, so, yeah, the most important thing is do you sew it all together and then, you know, build your top? No, I, I don't think so. I don't think that's the answer. <laughs> However, um, you will experiment with your, you know, your own desires. I took it all apart because... Uh, the linear thing was bothering me and um, I, I I was combining and, and then I had to embroider and I had too much stuff on it already I kind of went a little overboard so uh, starting today I'm gonna embellish just the just the simple embroidery whether it gets covered or not some I'll do beads and, and the whole thing, but I'm not going to go crazy on beads because I want to, you know, fill in the, the, the middle. So um, I'm going to wash this also by hand, let it soak uh, in some soft detergent and try to clean it as best I can and then let it let it dry out in the sun. And uh, but don't forget your metallic threads even little pieces like this right here little pieces of lace very tiny but you can do a lot with that so don't throw it away um, I went through some old clothes that I didn't wear anymore and I tore those up and um, trying to you know use that but oh, here here's an example where I did the embroidery but no beadwork and so once I put it together, let's pretend this isn't, then I can have my beadwork. So just go with your embroidery first. And then, like on this one, I can do the beads after. You know, it, but they're so small, they, they might not get in the way too much. But I, I don't know. All, all I can tell you is that to do this kind of stuff with, them sewed together this would have to wait this would have to wait you know so you got to think about that my son kind of goes into this piece a little um, but you know do even the grandma the little grandma handkerchief that I had <clears throat> you know you're gonna have to wait to put that on until you've done embroidered. See, I haven't embroidered under here, but I'm okay with that for now. I'll just embroider up to that point and a little bit over here, or I could cover that with something 
you know, more lace. I was thinking about putting something around here anyway. So my tip, I guess the most important one is, do you sew it all together and embellish? I don't think so. I've tried it. It wasn't to my liking. Um, if you're linear, go for it. But do your embroidery first anyway. And um, at least get that established. I mean, that is kind of the golden rule for crazy quilts is to have it all embroidered. So your, your seams. But you can do however you want. But I'm just telling you what I experienced. So it uh, it's... Uh, it's a long project. This takes hours. So, you know, do that slow sewing and enjoy it and get creative. And, and uh, I'm new at embroidery, so uh, I'm not an expertise. And I, I do everything quilt, crochet, sew, beadwork, um, canning, cooking, you know, uh, garden. I, I just do everything. I don't sew clothes well, but I can sew clothes. <laughs> I crochet okay, but I'm not great like some women out and men out there. I quilt. Uh, I do okay in my quilts, but I'm not anything like some of these people. So really, I do a lot, but I'm master of nothing, and that's okay. So um, I, I dedicate this quilt to my creator in heaven, Yahua, which most people call Lord or God. I call him by his Hebrew name and his son Yahusha HaMashiach. So I'm dedicating this because he's given me a, a, a talent to use my hands and he's created the flowers and um, uh, the little butterflies. He's, he's just, he's the creator of all. So he gave man the intuition to create beads. <laughs> And I give him all the credit. And he gave me some great grandmas. So I'm dedicating this one to him. So that's it. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. It was um, kind of a quick tutorial. Tips, basically. And if you have any questions, just leave your comments below. I, I'm new, so please like and subscribe. And share. And um, I hope that you get some inspiration. That's my goal is for you to become inspired and um, to see, you know, it won't be perfect, but it's still fun. It's great. It's therapeutic too. So um, I'm going to put out some short videos, maybe three minutes long on uh, once I master a stitch, I'm going to create a video and post it under how to embroider. Uh, for my reference, because, you know, you put it away for three months, you forget. And uh, I have to learn them as I go. And I, I think having a bunch of short videos might be handy for me as well as you. So I'll be doing that. So I think that's everything. The ribbons, uh, the beads, threads, buttons, uh, trims. And uh, just when you're out there shopping, keep your eye open, you know, like Goodwill for clothes and just tear those puppies up. So um, anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Talk to you later.